Hello, uh, what we're going to do here today is I'm going to uh, show you all how to use uh, the 10 ton hydraulic crimping tool and how to uh, crimp a uh, lug onto a wire using this tool. I uh, also got a comment that uh, they would like to see also how it's uh, used and how to use it. Uh, as if you've seen in my other video, I did not show how to crimp. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and clean this jacket off a little bit. Uh, make sure when you do, I'm going to try to keep my hands out of y'all's way. Uh, don't clean too much of the insulation off, just enough to where where it ends on the lug here. So you want to take back about that much. Now this is the this is the way I've all, I've crimped all my terminals. <clears throat> so here we go. Be careful using a sharp razor blade. And try not to uh, get cut any uh, strands of wire off. You know, just work with it a little bit. Take your time. I mean, a lot of people has their different ways of uh, crimping the tool. You know, crimping the lug on with different style tools. You know, like a hammer style crimping tool. A uh, lot, lot of them more expensive crimping tools. Solder. Uh, this method here works really good. And like I said, just take your time. Work with the jacket a little bit. And it would come off. I'm using 4 gauge uh, new concept wire and it's really easy to cut. See, as you can see, I got all the uh, insulation off. Uh, my method is I'm not going to twist the strands of copper, the tin copper wire. Uh, I'm going to use the pinch and push in method. That's what I like to use. There's no wires hanging out at all. Slide it on. Then once it's on, you can go ahead and give it a little twist, just to make sure it's all the way. Actually, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna make sure I've measured it, cut it correctly. Show you guys. See how it's about where you want it. So let me go ahead and put it back on. And like I said, use the pinch and push in method. Try to get most of it, or if not all of it. I mean, it, it will take some messing with, but it can be done. I've did all my wires like this. There we go. And then, like I said, once you get it on, just give it a little twist down. That's what it'll look like. Now for the... Now using this tool, it's a little... It's a little complicated to hold in your hand. Uh, so you just have to work with it a little bit. Be patient with this as well. Uh, when you... All right, let's see here. Let me make sure I got the right size dies in it. Okay, 25. Now with this tool, like I said in my previous video, uh, if you're crimping 4 gauge wire like I am, you would want to use a uh, 25 die uh, and so on and so forth. I also have a reference sheet in my other video that will show you uh, the right size dies to use with uh, you know, lugs and, and uh, different size wires. So you make sure you use the right size die.
Uh, like I said, before you start crimping, turn that valve to the on position. That way, the hydraulic tool can crimp. Now, when you let's see, when you install it here. Now make sure you know once you uh, just get it tight a little bit. Just make sure you get uh, put a little bit of pressure on it. That way you, you have it in the right position you want it. Let's see here. Like I said, it's 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 you got to work with with the uh, you got to work with the uh, tool a little bit because you're doing it with one hand and it can. But once you get the hang of it, I'm just trying to take my time because it's hard to do anything with holding it like this and trying to stay out of y'all guys' view. I might have to hold it up for a minute so I make sure I get it lined up where I want it. Yeah, that'll work. All right, that's why I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start crimping down. And once you get a little bit of pressure on the lug, uh, go ahead and hold the back wire. And as you're crimping it, just apply a little bit of pressure. That'll well, you know, all the wire can get in. Just go ahead and crimp it. Just keep on crimping it until uh, the dies bottom out. Now, once they bottom out, don't keep uh, crimping your tool because uh, you can uh, do damage to the O-rings, like I said in my other video. You loosen it up. Now, what I like to do is I loosen it up a little bit, turn the lug just 180, 380 degrees, and then give it one more little crimp. Just make sure it's holding. And again, let me make sure that's where I want it. Sorry about that, I had to give me something to drink. Alright, so let me look at it, make sure. Alright, I'm happy with that. So go ahead and give it more. Actually, I'm going to loosen it up just a little bit. Like I said, I mean, it's an easy tool to use, it's just you got to work with it. Be patient. There we go. I like the I like the way these things crimp better. Of course, you know I like all my stuff looking nice, and when I even my crimps, I like them to be good crimps. There we go. Yeah, you know, like I said, just give it a crimp till the dies bottom out. And you are not getting that lug off. <coughs> I pulled on it. And that's the finishing with the crimp. And what I like to usually do, I got the adhesive uh, shrink wrap. This lug is a little bit bigger than. Should put that on first. I usually don't use these big of lugs, but this I've used all my little lugs, so this 
the only log that I have left. And then go ahead. You can use a lighter. I got a heat gun. I'd rather use a heat gun. A uh, lighter it tends to leave uh, a residue from the, uh, you know, the fumes from the lighter. So I'd rather use a heat gun. It kind of heats a little bit better. And that's what it would look like. And then, you know, like I said, I probably won't be able to get this boot on because the lug is a little bit too big. Uh, but I'm going to see what I can't. I might be able to get it on there. Hell yeah. There we go. And that's what it will look like. You know, sometimes uh, the lug is a little bit too big, uh, but this boot went on.